So yes, my name is uh, Jérôme David. I'm working uh, at uh, Commissariat Energy Atomique in France. It's the French uh, Atomic Energy Commission. And I want to present you today the evolution we made of uh, the data network of our classified uh, HPC center. And uh, we made an evolution from a storage cluster to what we used to call a multipurpose uh, IB EDR network. I will start with some uh, history. So I will speak about uh, Terra 100, which uh, uh, was our first uh, petaflopic uh, cluster. Uh, we needed uh, at this time to design the, the, stor the storage uh, uh, network for this cluster. And uh, I will not talk about uh, the size of the storage. I will more talk about um, the bandwidth we need to access the storage. So internally of the fabric, uh, Terra 100 had the uh, private luster storage. We called it Scratch. Uh, it accesses at uh, 300 gigabytes per second. And uh, we have a separate uh, global luster storage. We call it Store, um, which can be accessed at 200 gigabytes per second. It's, it is uh, accessed through luster router. And it has a HSM functionality with HPSS. And we also have a several post-processing clusters which uh, access the same uh, storage. The network for this uh, fabric is uh, IBQDR based on uh, Volta hardware. And we were using uh, UFM from Mellanox uh, with the Tara uh, routing algorithm. And on the Ethernet side of the, um, the cluster, the compute cluster, we, we had a direct uh, Ethernet uh, attachment. Uh, for the management node, for the login nodes, and for uh, what we call IP gateway, which has basically an IP router to reach uh, the, the compute node of the cluster. So we, we, channel, we change uh, most of some, some, some of the stuff here to, uh, to be ready to uh, uh, 20 plus petaflop uh, uh, cluster. So we get a uh, a new order of magnitude for the bandwidth is, uh, we need to access the, for the storage. We'll still have a dedicated uh, um, storage per cluster. We will need uh, at least a four file system. And uh, we'll have a shared uh, file system for all the cluster. And then we identify at least uh, seven uh, clients to access that. And we will still use a HSM feature for flash, uh, rotating drive, and uh, HPSS. So this will be on the same fabric. Uh, we need to provide uh, inter-cluster communication to uh, be able to do a sub-cluster administration for the, for the system guy. Uh, in the future, we want to put a login cluster within the HPC center and uh, provide for the user in-situ visualization of uh, the code running. Uh, one big step for us is the hardware standardization of what we call the service node. So service node can be a LNet router, IO proxy, which uh, uh, connect to a, a file system and put it, uh, um, show it as 9P inside the computing cluster, and an IP gateway. Um, we'll need uh, Ethernet to IB interconnection uh, for this fabric. And uh, basically, we are told to use uh, chassis switches because uh, we had a bad history with uh, fabric maintenance. So, so I remember the, the Danze flight um, uh, presentation last year, uh, so we are using, uh, we're using director switches. So for that, we'll need uh, to implement QS. Uh, we we'll need SIOV because the vendor uh, are providing it. Uh, we need uh, to provide network segmentation even on Infiniman, uh, an, inter an Ethernet interconnection, and we identify we will uh, use uh, at least uh, 800 ports for this topology. And for that, we'll need uh, routing validation. So our answer is a, a multipurpose uh, EDR network. So we'll use, uh, we will use two uh, chassis switches, so two director switches. And uh, basically, we connect uh, these two chassis with uh, two leaf switches on the both sides. Um, we'll have a 36 port for the interconnection, and we'll have uh, 48 uh, leaf switches for resources uh, connection. Uh, the storage will be. Uh, HSM luster. Um, 
we'll have a flash access as 1.2 terabyte per second, a rotating drive at 200 gigabyte per second, and HPSS. Um, we'll have, uh, as I said, a dedicated storage. So the, the fastest one will be uh, 450 gigabyte per second. And uh, the hardware the standardization of uh, the service node uh, result in uh, having a node with one interface, uh, InfiniBand or anything, on the cluster interconnect, and one interface on the RTHP, which uh, it's uh, the name we give uh, of the multipurpose ADL network, and will not have any more uh, direct uh, Ethernet to reach the backbone. Instead of that, we'll use a in infiniment to Ethernet gateway based on uh, uh, SwitchX uh, hardware from Melanox. And it will give us uh, up to 160 uh, gigabit per second of backbone access. For all this, um, we'll do uh, uh, QoS, so we will classify the, 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 the flow. Um, this uh, reflection uh, thinking will result in a new network hierarchy. As um, we had already a data-centric uh, base, if we go uh, bottom to top, uh, we had all the cluster connected to an uh, InfiniBand uh, storage uh, network. Um, right now, what we define is that it will be only connected to this uh, storage uh, network, no more, um, no more Ethernet. Uh, so we'll uh, need to enable a new functionality on InfiniBand, like uh, backbone access. Uh, for compute clusters through IP gateway. Uh, we'll have a direct backbone access for the storage cluster, and so we will need to maintain uh, network segmentation of our infinimum. And uh, this configuration will, will also uh, allow us to have uh, inter-cluster communication with, with uh, today uh, IP over IB. Um, we, it is possible now to have a cluster federation, and uh, as I said, we have a uh, a login cluster perspective and service cluster perspective uh, within InfiniMan. And we'll keep, in fact, the, the data center uh, security equipment to, um, to do all the filtering on the IP access. And for the user, which uh, may be uh, on the LAN, on, on the private one, or for the uh, case in internet, uh, it will not see the difference, in fact. That's the point. Um, how do we connect uh, to the backbone through InfiniMan? Um, so it's kind of a use case of uh, the proxy RP gateway. Um, so um, we use uh, uh, proxy RP. Uh, basically, proxy RP map uh, one um, VLAN to one uh, partition on InfiniMan, and it ensures uh, IP connectivity. So we use, we use a multiple um, proxy RP instance uh, to uh, have multiple uh, interconnection uh, network between uh, the IP gateway and the backbone. And on the IP gateway, we, we, uh, so we use a service node to do IP gateway, and uh, we have one routing table per resource group. Um, we use a bird as a IP uh, routing uh, daemon, um, and uh, we use a BGP uh, routing protocol to do that. And if we look at uh, inside the, the computer, every kind of resource is uh, multi-owned uh, using ECMP on a multiple gateway, which uh, take uh, different paths to go to the backbone. So we, we have uh, load sharing and uh, no uh, single point of, of failure here. Uh, like I said, the traditional uh, security is done with, uh, uh, the, the network security is done with traditional uh, firewalling uh, stuff in Ethernet world. Um, how do we connect the cluster to the storage? It's um, um, more common. Uh, we have uh, IO routers on service node, so we have at least uh, 250 LNet routers. Uh, those uh, LNet routers are not uh, specialized, they are utilized for uh, dedicated uh, storage, so the scratch file system and shared storage, the store file system. Um, this picture is a little bit old, um, but it represents uh, the access uh, to the uh, global, file, the global uh, storage, so the store file system. And uh, we'll use a transfer node to move data from flash to drive, and uh, other transfer node to move data from drive to HPSS. Uh, we identify that we will need a flow differentiation for, uh, we will need some latency for the MDS access. 
And uh, for the data flow, we will uh, have different uh, uh, VL for uh, dedicated storage. And for uh, shared storage, we will based on the source destination and partition to uh, identify the, the flow. And currently, we are using uh, HVL, the Melanox hardware is providing us. So we find use case uh, where uh, we can use more if you provide. Um, this is what uh, the topology look like. So we can identify the two uh, director switches and the interconnection done with uh, two sw switches on the both sides. Um, 36 uh, link uh, of interconnection and from uh, left to bottom uh, we can see here uh, the, the dedicated storage, um, the shared storage, the store file system with a rotating drive. Here we have uh, 1.8, I think, uh, petaflopic uh, size uh, cluster. A uh, small cluster, after that we have ter still Terra 100, which is a one uh, petaflop, uh, sorry, it's petaflopic, uh, one petaflop. Um, we have the HPSS uh, mover, the flash to disk mover, and on the other side we have a dedicated uh, uh, file system for Terra 1K 2.2, which will be um, uh, 20 petaflops. Uh, the flash uh, file system, uh, which will be global storage, and then the, the, the 20 petaflop cluster. If we uh, draw the, um, the flow map, only the, the data flow, we can uh, see that uh, each and every uh, computer uh, cluster uh, will access both storage. So on the LNET uh, router, we need uh, at least two class of service. And uh, also the HPSS and uh, mover will uh, need to access the the global file system. On the other side, which is under deployment today, um, we have the same behavior, but um, we also need to uh, transfer flash, uh, flash uh, data from uh, to data from flash file system to store file system. Basically, this will work as a, as a pools on a luster uh, storage. And um, while we are doing that, in fact, uh, the new cluster will need to be able to reach the um, uh, rotating drive uh, because the data will have moved. So if you want to get data, it has to access that. And basically, all the other cluster will need to access the flash storage. Um, so we can identify uh, two points uh, on this topology where we need uh, to have at least uh, seven to eight uh, different uh, kind of flow, and we need to guarantee the bandwidth over there. Um, we see we'll have a, a lot of QS, though, so we proceed to fabric uh, configuration. And um, if we identify uh, what we want, we want a fine grain partition membership as we are providing by backbone over IB. Uh, we don't want every node to be in every partition, so we need to do that. We need to provide a QS configuration. Um, so this is the list of all the, the files we need to, uh, to fill, and we need to leave. Uh, during the duration of the uh, network. And it's really uh, um, not um, easy to modify each and every of this file. Uh, it, may be, uh, it may lead to some uh, error in the configuration file, and OpenSM doesn't like error in configuration file. Uh, so we need a tool to provide a higher level description and uh, to allow a non-expert to do some configuration without being afraid, oh, I will broke everything. Um, we start with a tool we call the IB Manager. Uh, we are really inventive uh, on the name. Uh, it's a Python script uh, which uses a Python RDMA, uh, essentially for discovering the node on the fabric. And uh, as we're use, using SIOV, we still need to manually uh, enter VM uh, grids. And uh, it's uh, generating all the configuration file we are talking about uh, here. Uh, so we describe uh, uh, on this uh, tool uh, the partition, the, the group in which we put nodes, then we link the the groups in one or multiple partition. And we can describe a flow between groups and apply a QS policy on that. Uh, so now we think we configure the fabric correctly. So we check it out. And uh, we unlight uh, some problem. Uh, first of all is that uh, SRUV VM was not able to cross uh, Proxy RP, so by design, is not a good uh, solution for our uh, 
a network. Then um, we have a multiple problem with uh, QoS, and, uh, like um, uh, only four VLs were available on ConnectX4 uh, HCA. Um, also, we identified that QoS uh, was not respected uh, on interlink uh, switches, on inter-switch uh, links, sorry. Um, so we lost the benefits of QoS uh, within the fabric. Um, also, at the beginning, uh, when we enable SIOV, uh, only one VL was advertised on the network. We cannot use multiple VLs. And one security issue is that uh, limited membership uh, was not working on D4PK for ConnectX for HCA. I think all this issue has been fixed uh, by Melanox uh, today. Um, but it's always complicated to have them uh, integrated uh, on the network because of the multiple vendors and the multiple OSs we have. Um, so it takes some time. And it's production environment, so we cannot do uh, uh, what we want. Um, one interesting um, um, problem we have been through is the QS cost. In fact, we have a, a scenario where we want to use 300 meter uh, links, and uh, so it's a FDR cable. So uh, when we set up that, uh, the system uh, administrator say, "Oh, we have a really bad performance on these nodes." Uh, we take a look into that. And so we made some more extensive testing with uh, multiple uh, cable lengths and uh, with multiple uh, VL to see what was the problem. And I did not test uh, ConnectIB here because uh, ConnectIB only provides uh, four VLs and not eight. Um, we can see uh, on the worst case scenario with 300 meters that uh, with eight VL running at FGR speed with uh, ConnectX3, we have basically one third of the bandwidth of the link. Um, so it's really uh, uh, a big issue here. And when we tested the same uh, environment with ConnectX4 uh, HCA, so at FGR, FGR speed, we can see we have uh, kind of the same behavior with eight VL uh, and 300 meter cable. Um, but remember, a ConnectX4 uh, can run EDR, so it would be interesting to have the same kind of test uh, with uh, EDR speed, EDR links, uh, but I, I didn't have that uh, at the moment, so um, this is only FDR. Um, what is good is that uh, when uh, Melanox implements the 8 uh, VL feature on ConnectX4, it allows us to choose, in fact, by flashing the firmware, how many VL we want to use uh, on the HCA. So we can uh, basically use 8VL within the fabric and say this HEA is only used two. So um, we solve the problem uh, like that. Um, now I will speak about topology validation. Um, it's the first time for us that we are using two director switch uh, interconnected uh, through leaf switches. Uh, we define the interconnection size on the bandwidth need, uh, not less uh, not a lot more, so the need is uh, 250 gigabytes per second, which are generated by a 34 transfer node. This is really our main need. After that, there are other flow, like I show you, uh, that uh, came along. Uh, because we have uh, a system engineer with many imagination, and uh, okay, they need, need to be addressed. That's what a networking guy do. Um, so, how do we process? We create the topology within uh, IBSIM. Uh, OpenSM accepts the topology, routing seems to be fine. But if we do manual digging, and uh, what uh, interested us uh, within the topology, we see that uh, they might or might not be pass overlapping uh, on the top switches here, uh, if we um, look at uh, one group of interest. So, manual digging is a very long process. So, we Find, uh, we, we designed a, a, a script that uh, helped us. Um, we had a previous work uh, on uh, pass elimination. So pass elimination is a, a cleaning LFT because they are uh, exhaustive. Um, it's initially based on the IB graph from Calcul Quebec. Um, for our need, we, we want to consider routing group by group. And uh, we need a, a way to display the result. So we have... Uh, a spreadsheet basically with one tabulation per group and one line per switch. So we have here all the level one uh, switches for the bottom of the topology. And uh, we have uh, one uh, column per port. So we have 36 uh, uh, column here. It's 
not uh, easy to read, I understand, but uh, uh, this is the, the, the point. We put some color on that because it's uh, not uh, easy to follow the data within a spreadsheet. So in red, we have the uplinks on the topology, uh, in, blue, uh, in um, green, the downlinks. And uh, if we are looking at the uh, third level of switch, uh, this is the interconnection between the two um, chassis. So there are links between uh, switch that are at the same level if we consider that as a factory. So our uh, workflow for validating that is, uh, as I said, IBSIM with uh, some patch to work with Python and GMA, thanks to JSON. Um, IB Manager, uh, where we define uh, what we want in the topology. OpenSM and then this, uh, this tool and uh, of course uh, eyes and brain to uh, validate that. So if we, uh, I just um, go through two examples, uh, one with the factory routing algorithm. Uh, so I will be um, taking care of only the four uh, switches at the top of the topology, the top level. Um, so we have four lines. And if we look at the big picture, we look at all destination within the fabric, uh, everything seems to be okay. We have a pass uh, very well balanced on the links and uh, that's good. But we want especially this group, uh, we, which uh, are the node moving data from the flash storage to the rotating drive. So we want to use the, the wall uh, bandwidth that uh, the network can provide. And we can see that we are only uh, using two switches with uh, two paths per port. And basically we are using only the green links on the interconnection. So um, this will only get half of the bandwidth of the fabric. Uh, this may or may not happen depending on the switch theory ID, if I understood. Uh, so now we have uh, two solutions. We can define a group of interest in the IO grid file. Uh, so we can define one group which is uh, routed separately. Or we can use the routing chain feature from uh, Melanox uh, SM. Um, by defining a multiple group uh, with separated routing. So we try that and uh, we try to validate also the, the routing. We define multiple groups on the topology. Uh, we are still looking at the top of the topology. The big picture is really different. Uh, this is kind of normal because uh, paths are not equally balanced uh, because they are in some different group. The main group is still uh, routed with a uh, fat tree. Um, because the resource uh, may not cross the connection or does not, uh, does not have a need of uh, bandwidth. But if we uh, have a closer look of a uh, group of interest here, um, so uh, we can see that we'll use uh, two, two switches here on this way and two switches to go down. Um, so we are basically uh, using all the link uh, available uh, for, for that. Uh, so we identify that uh, routing will not be the source of the congestion uh, here, if there is any. Uh, but uh, and QS will manage the interflow concurrency when uh, there is uh, one. Okay, this time for me to take to the conclusion. Um, it's important for us to simulate before deploying. Um, even if it's a long process, the step-by-step -step validation is. Uh, uh, really meaningful and uh, I think we can enhance that with a traffic uh, simulation uh, on a, a simulator. Um, routing analysis is uh, crucial. Uh, it helps in designing a topology. Uh, it's, it helps uh, in advance when we simulate and design topology and uh, in the everyday uh, it helps also to answer the sysadmin guys say, oh, why is my performance bad and why uh, it doesn't scale? Mostly it can be because of the routing uh, in the fabric. Uh, so it's really okay when uh, routing is easy enough to draw it on the table. Uh, okay, we can explain that. Uh, adaptive routing uh, will add uh, complexity on that uh, to diagnose the uh, problem and everything. So it will be a, a huge step. And uh, IB uh, routers are interesting, um, uh, but we will need uh, to add a, a way to identify how we can uh, share the load uh, between uh, multiple routers and uh, between multiple fabrics. So our fabric configuration tool uh, allows us to describe the topology and uh, it can evolve with the subnet manager feature evolution. Uh, 
So even if it's an a ugly uh, script, uh, it do the job. Uh, so the deployment is under progress for our 20 petaflop uh, cluster um, and the storage associated with that. So it's a challenging pro project for the team. Uh, it gives us a solid experience in the fabric configuration. And I believe that the new network hierarchy is opening uh, some uh, horizon for Exask. Uh, so this is my wish list. Uh, we are currently using a uh, all the resources of uh, QoS on uh, Melanox HTA. We will find use case for more if uh, you provide uh, the 15 uh, VL that Infiniban is defining. Um, uh, we suffer a performance issue with long cable. What about a dynamic uh, buffer location uh, within the HCA for the VL? And uh, I also believe that uh, Infiniban to Ethernet uh, mapping will be uh, very interesting in the future. And it could improve with some feature like uh, ECMP within uh, the proxy app uh, gateway and uh, uh, maintaining the diff of tagging uh, with a uh, mapping between Finiman uh, service level and uh, Ethernet DSCP. Okay, that's it. Thank you. You have a question? Then? Yeah, I have a question. Um, so, what version and distro of Lustre, Lustre are you using, and are you happy with the HSM? In fact, we are using, a, so I'm not a storage guy, but uh -huh. uh, we are using an internal uh, distro, which is uh, called uh, Ocean. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, currently it's Luster 2.7. And uh, we are using a uh, Robinhood and some stuff like that to move data for okay. the HSM. And how did you come up with your QoS settings for your storage stuff? Did you just try a bunch of them and do some performance, or did you just do analysis, or how'd you decide? Uh, we know how many uh, bandwidth the small cluster need to have to work correctly. Mm -hmm. So basically we start with that, guarantee the bandwidth for the small cluster because we don't want the big one to, uh, to take all the bandwidth. Right. And uh, by doing that, we know that the big one will take the rest. So that's it. Basically. Gotcha. Thanks. Well, along those same lines, so you, you built your own custom VL uh, waiting uh, attributes for the for the switches. Uh, maybe I don't get the, the configuration of the uh, the SL sca uh, VL scheduling on the switches. You you did it yourself then. We configured that in OpenSM. Yeah yeah uh, okay all right. Uh, concerning the um, the problem with uh, long cables. Yeah. Uh, you know you showed the behavior, but was there sort of a root cause analysis of what is really happening. Is something defective about the cables or the something? No, everything is working correctly. Uh, we, we ask uh, some uh, information about that uh, to Melanox. Um, it would be good to have uh, in advance the performance we can get uh, uh, with the HCA, the cable, and the VL we want to activate. Uh, they were not at this time uh, able to answer to that. Uh, but everything is working correctly. It's just, I think, uh, the, the buffer inside the HCA is split in separate uh, dedicated buffer uh, for each VL. So it cannot uh, have enough credit to uh, fill the pipe. Okay. That's my okay. explanation. Well, yeah, today. okay. So initially, I think you were saying you're limited on VLs and they maybe gave you uh, some patch to have uh, you know, more VLs, but maybe no. it, the buffering is a little bit yeah, strained the, you know, in that case. I, I think the buffer is limited inside the HCA, so... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. all right. Thank you.